Chancellor, may I, Professor Graham Shipley, as public orator, present Bridget Toll, a candidate for a distinguished honorary fellowship. The rank of distinguished honorary fellow is rarely awarded by the university and only to those who have previously received an honorary doctorate and continue to make a notable contribution to our life. The number of fellows is limited to 24. Indeed, since the fellowship was instituted in 2005, only 16 such awards have been made. It is therefore my especially pleasant task to highlight the outstanding voluntary service given by our honorand, Bridget Toll, since we honored her with the award of a doctorate of civil laws. Before I turn to the present, a short sketch of her previous achievements may help to give a more rounded picture of a person who is eminent in public and national life, yet rooted in her home county of Leicestershire. Growing up in a large house in the village of Barrow-upon-Saw, north of the city, Bridget was a granddaughter of the founder of one of Leicestershire's many successful textile businesses, producing hosiery and knitwear. It bore the family name, and for nearly 70 years was a major employer in Loughborough and other Leicestershire towns, paying good wages and known for looking after the welfare, welfare of its employees. In the 1940s and again in the 1970s, the family made major benefactions to Holy Trinity Church in Barrow in the form of four of the eight church bells. Bridget grew up with many privileges, such as attending boarding school from the age of around nine. But her mother, a keen supporter of the Girl Guides, who believed, as that association does today, that girls can do anything, made sure that when she returned from school each summer, she went on a camping break. Bridget remained rooted in her local community, as well as having the opportunity to apply those practical skills and organisational abilities that came more naturally to her than academic work. What she most enjoyed about school was the sports and practical subjects. She surmises that she is dyslexic, a, com a concept not widely understood in those days. But as for many high achievers, neurodivergence did not stop her finding her best talents and making the world better through service to others. An education that opens up opportunities for students to flourish either in academic or more conventionally creative spheres, or both, would surely be the ideal combination. Bridget Toll's determination to help others has made her a pioneer in many ways, though she is too modest to concede the point. Despite her difficulty with academic work, she persuaded Exeter University to admit her at a time when the expansion of higher education was opening up new opportunities for women. After graduating in politics, law and economics, she spent a year teaching in Uganda under the Voluntary Service Overseas Scheme, and she has continued to support the school where she worked. Only then did she agree to join the family firm, initially not in a position of authority, but receiving the same detailed technical training as the mostly male operatives in how to maintain and repair the complex knitting machines of those pre-electronic days. Eventually, she entered the management structure where her experience of the shop floor and her ability to empathize with ordinary workers were invaluable as she fought to preserve the jobs of a thousand employees at a time of growing competition from overseas. Finally, she became chief executive discovering only by chance in the late 1980s that she was one of only three female CEOs among the thousands of companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. In parallel with her business career, which often necess necessitated taking the 6.30 a.m. train to London to promote her firm, Bridget continued to pursue her interest in the Girl Guides that had inspired her since her early days and had given her opportunities to develop teamwork skills, initiative, and resilience, as guiding does to this day. In time, she was elected chief guide and chair of the trustee board of the association. In this area, too, her organizational skills made a real difference in the 1990s, a time of increasing regulation and the requirement to formulate policies in areas where previously experienced and common sense had been thought sufficient. 
It should be remembered that at one time, more than one third of all women in the UK were or had once been girl guides. For her huge contributions, Bridget received honours, including, in 2001, a CBE. Retirement is not a word that comes naturally to mind when we regard Bridget Toll. A public role she performed for many years, and to which she still contributes, although nominally retired, is that of Deputy Lieutenant for Leicestershire, one of a group of local persons who assist the Lord Lieutenant of each county in representing the Queen or King of the day in public events. When Bridget's time as Head of Girl Guides ended, she found another new outlet for her talents. As a member of this university's council, our highest governing body, made up largely of non-academics. Her commercial know-how was put to good use in the role of treasurer for four years, and her professional and organisational talents as chair of council for six years up to 2019. The chair exercises authority even over the vice-chancellor. Bridget was the first woman to perform both these roles. Her calm decisiveness and deep understanding of the whole community, including staff and students, and helped by visits to campus each week, helped steer our ship through the crisis that inevitably beset a large organisation in difficult economic times. That the university has weathered these storms and emerged in good health is widely agreed to be due very largely to Bridget's good sense, her dedication to professional standards, her ability to achieve satisfactory consensus, and her willingness to take tough decisions when necessary. In the five years since being awarded her honorary doctorate in 2019, though the formal conferral was delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Bridget Toll has continued to make effective, though now less formal, contributions to the university, not to mention generous charitable donations, as she has for many years. She remains an active presence and a fount of knowledge, thanks to her decades of experience and her deep sympathy with people and their individual characters. Within and outside the university, she has been not only an example to women in a society that still struggles to achieve equality of status, but an example to anyone, irrespective of gender. We have invited her today not only to celebrate her past contributions, but also to recognise her continuing role at the heart of our community. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Council and the Senate, I present Dr Bridget Ellen Toll that you may confer upon her the, the title of Distinguished Honorary Fellow. Chancellor, honoured guests, graduates and graduands, and members of this university. Firstly, I'd like to thank the university. It is a great honour to receive this fellowship. Though, as a non-academic, I'm experiencing a significant case of imposter syndrome. Of course, I'd also like to thank the public orator for his generous words. The orator has mentioned various firsts for the university. To add to them, I'm delighted that we now have a distinguished woman, Dame Maggie, as our chancellor. It is extraordinary that it's taken until the 21st century for these glass ceilings to be broken. It was important that a woman became the university's tr treasurer and then became the university's chair of council, 
the governing body of this university. It was not for personal glory, but just to prove it's natural, it's normal. Why shouldn't a woman do those roles? For me, it was much more important and exciting to see the percentage of women on council, the university's governing body, increase from 10% to 50%. This brought all the talents together to lead the university. A balance of varied strengths and experience of women and men gives a better chance of us all getting things right for everybody. Research undertaken at this university and elsewhere has found that companies with a higher gender balance are more likely to outperform organizations with a lower gender balance. In both business and academia, we need the contributions of outstanding women, and we need the contributions of outstanding men. Of course, there are still other diversity issues, which are a challenge for this generation of graduates to solve. I'd like to congratulate all of you graduating today. You've worked hard for your degrees. This is a day to celebrate your achievements. My only advice is to find a career that you enjoy, that gives you satisfaction as well as a salary. And finally, our university motto is that they may have life. But that's only a partial quotation. The full quotation is that they may have life and have it to the full. I hope that you make sure that you have life to the full. I recommend it. <laughs>